Are you guys tired of getting pegged and not being able to get that ball back in play using that reset? We have five things for you today that's gonna help your reset be a master. Now it's very difficult, it's the hardest shot in pickleball, but David, my brother, Abraham, my other brother, and my wife, Lauren, are all gonna help us figure out that reset. All right, so we're gonna talk about the first thing when it comes to reset, and that's the body position. Now in a reset, I'm in a trouble. So if I, I pop the ball up, or Laura, my partner's popped the ball up, we're gonna to try to back up as soon as we can so that we're getting ready for that reset. But we're not just gonna stay where we are in this, on our certain sides. We're gonna to slide to a certain position depending on where the pop-up is. So let's start with Abe. If I'm popping it up to his kind of right show your paddle up there, okay? His easiest shot is either gonna be the middle or it's going to be the sideline over here. For him to redirect it and put it over, the, over here is a lot more difficult and he can't hit as hard. So what we're gonna do is Lauren's gonna shift over to the left, I'm gonna shift over to the left, I'm gonna get my pal down, Lauren's gonna get her pal down, and we're putting our body in position where we think the easiest shot Abe is going to hit. Does that make sense? Now, as we come back up, Another position is going to be to his backhand side. Now for him, coming across his body, it's gonna be easier to go cross court and then easier to go in the middle, not down the line. If he tries to take that ball down the line, go ahead, it's a little bit more difficult and he might hit it wide. So in that situation, Lauren's gonna slide more to the middle and I'm gonna slide more to the outside here. So we're making him hit the more difficult shot, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing for David over here. Again, if we get one to the middle on his backhand, it's easier to come across his body. We slide over to the right, okay? And then if he gets one on the left side of his body, it's easier to come across his body. So we're gonna slide over. It's harder to go down the line. So we're gonna make sure we're putting our body in position in the correct position the ball we receive. Now let's jump in to two. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the second thing, which is the paddle position. So we've put our body in the proper position. Now we're gonna put our paddle in the proper position the paddle is gonna follow where we were moving with our body, right? So for example, if we put it up to Abe's left side here, where do we talk about? He's either gonna go middle or he's gonna to go to the line, okay? So we're gonna move our body in position, Lauren's over there, I'm covering the middle, but I'm also going to make sure my paddle is down and covering the middle to the left side of my body, not the right side. Same thing with Lauren, she's gonna cover the left side of her body. So if it goes to Lauren's right side, I got it covered, and if it goes to her left side of the body, she's got it covered. So our paddle follows and moves this way. In the same way, if we hit it up to the backhand side, we slide back over here. I'm gonna get my paddle down to my right. Lauren's gonna get her paddle down to the right. And we're gonna try to reset it there. Now, if it goes to the other side, we can quickly move the paddle over. But we're, again, we're putting the paddle where Abraham is most likely to hit the ball or is easiest to hit the ball for him. There's always exceptions. He might start hitting a lot of the balls on the back side down the line and he might be making it. So we need to make that adjustment mid game. But to start, we wanna make sure that we're in the proper position that's the easiest spot to hit the ball. All right, now we're gonna talk about the third thing, which is movement time. This is so important, not only for resets, but every single shot when we're moving. We have the time between my paddle and my opponent's paddle to move where we need to move. We talked about the GG rule and the BB rule. If you had a good shot, you go forward. If you had a bad shot, you back up. We're in the situation where we're hitting a reset, so we've hit maybe a bad shot and they've, they're attacking. So we are gonna be backing up, but we only have the time between my contact and their contact to move. We need to make sure that we're setting our feet before they hit the ball. This is really important. So. I'm gonna pop up a ball and you're gonna see Lauren and I, we're gonna back up as much as we can, but we're gonna set our feet right before they hit the ball. Ready, here we go. Set, and then get ready, right? So our feet are set, so one more time, here we go. Back up, set, and then I'm gonna reset. So my, my feet still are still before they hit the ball. Now this is, a bad, this is gonna be the bad situation where we're gonna move our feet while they're hitting the ball. Okay, so if I'm moving a direction, right, while the ball is moving a different direction, I can't make sure I switch directions more easily. So I, want, I don't wanna be moving my feet while the ball is moving a certain direction. I want my feet to be set. 
So make sure the next time you're out playing, when you hit a ball, make that decision to move a certain direction, but set your feet and get ready before they hit the ball. Which one do you think is correct when it comes to movement time? Here's the first one. And then here is the second one. Before we jump into our next tip, make sure you smash that like button and you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos coming out. Now I'm gonna jump over and teleport to the other side. All right, let's get into that fourth thing, which is anticipation. So Lucy, Laura, and I switch sides a little bit, but it doesn't matter because we wanna make sure that we're anticipating what's about to happen when we're in a like, difficult situation, right? So if ever we are in a dink battle, right? And all of a sudden, I pop the ball up. I need to make sure that I'm anticipating what Abe is about to do. Now, part of this is a little bit of analytics and reading our player. When, when I'm playing a full game, where is Abe like to go when he has that forehand smash? Is it over to the right? Is it over to the left? Where has his favorite place been? And with that information, I'm gonna make sure that I move that direction so that I'm making him hit a different direction, right? So make sure you're using anticipation, which is kind of telling the future of what's about to happen, and you're moving your paddle with that, right? So there's a lot more flexibility when it comes to anticipation. So let's pop, let's, let's hit a little dink battle, okay? I pop it up, getting ready, and I'm gonna try to, as soon as I hit that up, you saw that I move back, right? I'm trying to anticipate Abe smash. So let's go again, from here. Thinking. Oh, a little out, okay? But you saw that I backed up and I got my paddle ready, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that I'm trying to anticipate what's about to happen. There we go. Oh. So right there, Abe kind of showed an example of who wasn't ready for David's pop-up, right? So we need to make sure that we're watching and anticipating what's about to happen. From, from someone that can make a split second decision of seeing that David's ball was too high, we can early back up and then be ready for that ball. Where Abe didn't move off the line at all, which made him vulnerable for reaction. So we need to make sure Abe needs to be watching his partner, David, and seeing that, hey, that ball's popped up early on and then start to back up and get the pal down. So you're anticipating what's about to happen before it happens. That's so important when it comes to being able to reset. It's just, it's not all about quick hands and reacting. It's anticipating what your opponent's about to do. If you practice that, you will have better hands, you will have better resets, all. Alina wanted to let you know that you should stay tuned to the end for a bonus tip. So don't forget to stay tuned. All right, let's jump right into the last one, which is number five, to get that really good reset. This one's getting a little more technical. It's about controlling that paddle face. It's really important. Think of it as if the ball is coming down to you in a trajectory, my paddle face is gonna be open. If the ball is coming up to you in a trajectory, my paddle face is gonna be closed, okay? It makes a difference because you might let the ball bounce and it comes up to you, or you might be taking the ball out of the air and it's coming down to you. So if Abraham's receiving a ball up here, right? He's hitting the ball down which I need to make sure that my pal face is more open so that I can reset it, get it back over the net, right? Now, if, that, if I let that ball bounce instead of taking it out of the air, the ball's gonna bounce and the ball is actually gonna move up towards me, the trajectory. So I can't keep that same paddle face open because then the ball's gonna pop up real high and then he's gonna get another smash. So I need to make sure that my pal face is actually more closed slightly so as the ball is rising, the geometric angle will be able to put it over the net like you would if the ball is coming down to you. So if I have my pal face straight up and down even, and the ball's coming up at a 45 degree angle, it's gonna go up, out at a 45 degree angle. So I gotta make sure my pal face is a little more down. So you gotta make that decision early. Are you gonna let it bounce and the ball's gonna rise up to you, or are you gonna take it out of the air, okay? So here's a situation where I'm gonna let it bounce. I'm gonna try to close that paddle face a little bit. Okay, so I close that paddle face as it was rising to me so that I could get that reset. Now this one's out of the air. Ooh, a little high there. It's a little out. So as you could see though, 
In that situation, I got my pal face down, he hit it hard, it passed me, but it went out. So we need to make sure that our, I'm not tempted to go up for that, like I did, and I miss it, right? Here we go. Okay, so there you saw that my pal face was open because I took it out of the air and the ball was coming down to me, okay? Even if the ball does bounce and then it rises and then comes down, then we want to keep the open pal face again. So it's how the ball is coming to you. Remember, if the ball is coming to you and it's downwards, we want to contact with the face a little bit more open. If the ball is coming to up to you, then you want your pal face a little bit more closed. All right, so a bonus tip for you out there is making sure, this is a simple one, keeping the pal in front of us. So Laura and I, we're gonna do a little drill here with Abraham and David, and we're gonna, we're gonna start in this kind of reset position, in this defensive position, and we're gonna show you, you, you tell us which one is kind of right and wrong. Up and up. 